Welcome to biochemistry. As the name on top uh, and the emphasis implies, over the next few months, what we're going to be looking at is fundamental chemical concepts that are important for biological processes. This includes conversions of uh, biomolecules uh, that are important for the cell and also conversions of biomolecules into energy, which is important for uh, fueling uh, these biological processes. Before we start, it's really instructional to look at what are the common uh, elements that we see amongst biomolecules. The table here on the right shows the most abundant elements in the human body uh, by percentage of dry weight. So the top elements uh, that compose uh, bio biology in general are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, and sulfur. Now these, some of these may, uh, you may recognize from the common mnemonic uh, to remember these biologically important elements, uh, CHNOPs, which is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. And so these elements on top here make up 97% of the dry weight uh, in a human body. Another place you may have heard of some of these uh, very important elements are if you're into, for instance, gardening or uh, cultivating vegetables or plants, uh, where a common term seen as NPK, which is nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, uh, as these elements were very early uh, found critical uh, for improving crop yields. And so most of the, uh, these elements, these elements don't exist in, uh, in an elemental form like this in biology. Uh, they exist within uh, more complex biomolecules. And so it's, it's interesting to look at how might these complex molecules have been formed. Uh, so one theory for the origin of life is that complex molecules uh, that we see now uh, in, in uh, biological systems originated from a primordial atmosphere, much more simple molecules such as water dinitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, methane, and ammonia. Energy input from either lightning strikes, for instance, or uh, from ionizing radiation from the sun um, might have allowed for formation of complex molecules uh, such as amino acids, nucleotides, and sugars. Over time, these uh, polymerize. So if you start with a subunit, uh, which are one of these complex molecules, these may make chains of uh, related molecules uh, so that you make a longer um, uh, molecule. And these form uh, what are known, uh, what we see now as proteins, nucleic acids such as DNA or RNA, and complex carbohydrates. These, might, these uh, appear to go through what are called condensation reactions where you have elimination of water. As you have these longer chains, they're uh, they can undergo what's called self-assembly, which means they can start to fold in on each other, or they can make uh, larger uh, macromolecular structures. This also allows for replication through complementarity. And as we get to uh, replication self-assembly, this allows for life as we know it. And what we get are very complex uh, units of life uh, known as cells. So this uh, you may remember from biology, uh, where you have prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. Importantly, what, different, what uh, the boundary of the cell is made by the cell membrane, which encapsulates uh, the cell for both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes are how the DNA uh, inside, so in the prokaryote, the DNA is shown here, Whereas the DNA in a eukaryote is inside what's called a nucleus. The prokaryotes don't have a nucleus. And all the, the nucleus is a double membrane uh, that encapsulates um, the DNA inside of a eukaryote. And so that is actually, uh, in eukaryotes, this is where you typically see more uh, what are called organelles. And these are very specialized compartmentized um, structures within the cell that are surrounded by double membranes. And eukaryotes tend to have more of these, and they have different functions. So for instance, mitochondrion are important for converting um, 
molecules such as, uh, such as sugars into energy for the cell. Um, smooth and uh, the endoplasmic reticula is important for protein production. Golgi apparatus can be important for functions such as secretion of biomolecules outside of the cell. Um, and then, of course, the nucleus is for housing the DNA. In the end, uh, there's uh, a lot of really important chemistry that happens uh, within all of these structures and throughout the cell. That's important for keeping the cell alive. And on a larger scale, the organism uh, that, um, that these cells comprise. And so what we'll look at, um, again, what we will really uh, focus on is the chemistry of processes within biology, within the cells, uh, and for that, we first need a very strong basis in thermodynamics.